What shall I feed my baby? When shall I feed my baby? What shall I feed my toddler? When shall I feed my toddler? These are questions that all parents have and they are very important questions because the way the baby is fed, the way the toddler is fed, really lays down the tissue, the cellular, the bone foundation for the rest of, rest of their lives. Hippocrates, the father of all medicine, said, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. But it is a subject that, he, that does not, I believe, receive the importance that it should receive. A lot of time is spent on what toys, what colour coding in the child's bedroom, but the food that the child eats is of the most importance. And I know, ladies, that's why you're here to hear this lecture today, is to get some clarity on this subject. What I'd like to begin with now is I'd like to begin with the mother because believe it or not it's in utero and it's actually even the mother's lifestyle habits even before she conceived that has a lot to do plays a major part in the health status of the baby and how the baby grows. Now let's have a have a look for instance at the gut. You see, Hippocrates, the father of medicine, said, let medicine be your food and food be your medicine. But he said another oft quoted subject or statement, not quoted nearly as much as let food be your medicine and medicine be your food, but he said all disease begins in the gut. The gastrointestinal tract is what he is referring to. The gastrointestinal tract is about an eight metre tube in an adult human being. And it is a hollow tube. And anything that goes into that hollow tube is not part of you or me or baby until it gets broken down into tiny little substances and then absorbed into the blood. The blood is often called the life of the flesh or the river of life because the blood carries the nutrients to every part of the body. But it is in the gut that the breakdown of the food happens. And so nutrients in the blood, which are feeding every cell, are dependent on the proper function of the gut to break down that food into tiny substances. Now the gut is an interesting part of the human body because as, as, as I said, even though whatever goes in there is not part of you until it gets broken down, the, the gut performing properly is essential for the food to be broken down. Now let me give a little illustration of what the gut looks like. This is starting from the gastrointestinal tract area of the small intestine because it's the small intestine where most absorption happens. So the lining of the gut basically looks like this. And these are called little villi. And over the villi is the blood little blood capillary network. You see the food is coming down here, it gets broken down by enzymes at different part in the gut and when it gets broken down to the tiny substance called glucose then it can get absorbed into the blood. But lining the gastrointestinal tract is a thick layer of turf made out of lactobacillus acidophilus bifidus bacterium, so healthy bacteria. So it's this thick layer of turf that is lining this gastrointestinal tract and it's made out basically of bacteria or healthy bacteria. And the role of that bacteria is protection. Protection is very important because as I said, everything that goes down this gastrointestinal tract is not part of you till it gets broken down. And some things are coming down that gut that should not go into the blood. And so God designed the human body with this turf to play a protective role. But it not only plays a protective role, it is also important for absorption. So even though there are enzymes in the mouth, there are enzymes in the stomach that are breaking down food. The final touch of breakdown is happening in this thick wall or turf of bacteria. When a baby is in utero, that baby has a sterile gut. That sterile gut is referring to the fact that there is no bacterial wall. 
and the baby takes on that bacterial wall, that healthy or friendly flora, as the baby goes through the birth canal of the mother. And so can you see that understanding this is very important for the mother to have a correct, a correct uh, balance of microbes in her gut. Now what would interfere with this? What would interfere with this would be if the mother is a regular partaker of antibiotics. You've probably heard of antibiotics. Antibiotics have saved probably millions of lives so far. And antibiotics kill bacteria. And if a person's dying of a ver very severe lung infection and a strong dose of antibiotics is given to wipe out that bacteria, it can certainly save the life. But problem happening in society today is people have lost the simple ways of treating a cold or a flu. They've forgotten about taking garlic and having lemon and honey drinks and going to bed and giving their body the right conditions for healing. Many people are so fast and have so much pressure on them to make sure that the payment for the house goes in the bank, etc, etc. And so they take different drugs to, sub to suppress the symptoms and they keep going to work. Am I right? <laughs> this is happening. Whereas, did you know that a cold is a house clean? It's basically the body saying, can you just stop for a day? Can you just go to bed for a day? Can you stop eating for a day? Can you have lots of water? Maybe put your feet in hot water with a bit of mustard. Remember those old remedies grandma had? And the people want to keep going. And so they take the antibiotics. And antibiotics are being used too frequently. And many people I meet are having maybe two or three courses every year. And little by little, this is coming in, not only to kill off the bacteria in the, in the chest, which probably would have killed, been killed off very nicely by the body's own immune system and maybe a good dose of garlic, but it's also killing off, in part, this border protection. I call it border protection. And also, it is compromising the ability for fine, uh, final absorption. But let's have a look at a woman who's had a couple of doses of antibiotics maybe every year. By the way, did you know that the body can cope quite well with about two courses in a lifetime? And some people, I gave a meeting last night with 50 people, I said, put up your hand if you've never had an antibiotic. Not one hand went up. If my son James, who's 35, was in the audience, his hand would have gone up. Very unusual human being to have actually reached the age of 35 years and never had an antibiotic. And by the way, he's still alive. <laughs> and there's some of the things I'm going to touch on as we go through this meeting on some simple ways to, to help your child recover from simple ailments. But first of all, I wanted to lay a foundation. And we're having a look at the baby's gut flora as it's born. Let's say the mother has a cup, had a couple of doses of antibiotics every year. Her gut flora is getting compromised. Holes are eaten in that gut lining because of the um, antibiotics. Antibiotics can kill off unwanted bacteria, but they also kill off the good guys. They also kill off what's called the friendly or the healthy bacteria. And also, let's say the lady had uh, eczema, psoriasis, and she took cortisone. Cortisone is another drug that kills off the flora. And let's say the woman was on the pill, the contraceptive pill, for five years before she gave birth to her baby. That also interferes with gut flora. Can you see what's happening? And when the baby comes through the birth canal, the birth canal's flora is determined by the gut flora. So the baby is born with a compromised gut flora. Can you see where it's all starting? No wonder Hippocrates said all disease begins in the gut. Let's say a baby is born by caesarean section. How much gut flora is that baby getting? None. <laughs> I was talking to some midwives and they were surprised to hear me say that if a baby is born by caesarean section, then every morning the mother should paint a little lactobacillus acidophilus powder on her nipple. So the baby's getting a dose of that. Now, by the way, breast milk certainly will also put in some good, good gut flora. But can you see if the mother's gut flora is compromised, even her breast milk flora will be compromised. Now, on top of that, let's say the baby is not breastfed. 
Let's say the baby is given altered cow's milk and many formulas are altered cow's milk. And because they're dried powders, they really don't have that gut flora. And because they've been interfered with so much, and by the way, homogenized and pasteurized kills off any flora that may be in that milk. Now, pasteurization is happening to kill off uh, harmful pathogens in the milk. But if you ask the farmer, he will never give homogenized and pasteurized cow's milk to the baby calf because the baby calf will not live. And if the baby calf does live, the baby calf will not thrive. And yet many babies are being fed these compromised cow's milks, compromised, altered, because they've been altered, granted to kill off the harmful bacteria. But I have a friend who owns an organic dairy farm. And you go into his organic dairy, there is no smell. No smell, because he keeps it very clean. <laughs> If every dairy was clean, there would be no need for pasteurization. Can you see that? But my daughter in America, she was living opposite a dairy. And if you went past that dairy, oh, the smell. It was filthy. And sometimes those things that go on the udder would fall on the ground in the manure and the farmer would put it on the next udder. Now that milk has E. coli in it. That milk is a dangerous milk and it is not fit for human consumption unless it is pasteurized. you see that? <laughs> but the farm down the road is as neat as a pin. It is perfectly clean. But the, but the truck picks up the E. coli milk and the lovely clean milk and it all goes together. Can you see why pasteurization had to happen? Cow's milk's very good milk. For, cow, for cows. <laughs> but you have a look at the size of a baby calf. <laughs> it's far, far bigger than the size of a baby human. The, the milk that is closest to human milk is goat's milk. And I've met many babies, met many mothers who had healthy babies on the goat's milk. So, so if a mother cannot feed her baby, that would be the best option. But let's go back to gut flora. We're going on a journey of looking at this gut flora. So the baby's born with compromised gut flora. And then the baby is given altered cow's milk, which is not feeding this gut flora. And then at the age of two months, the baby is vaccinated. And the vaccination further compromises the gut flora. Now, if the baby is born with a strong gut flora, then vaccination doesn't knock it so badly. Can you see that? Some babies react badly to vaccination. Some babies don't react badly to vaccination. And you see it all comes back to gut flora. Now let's say at four months, the baby is given uh, cereal. Rice cereal? Many, many mothers are told that. But did you know that it is all dependent on the teeth, the way digestion happens. The first teeth that a baby gets is four on the top and four on the bottom. And that my baby's got their teeth about seven and a half. They began at seven and a half. So maybe not those eight teeth, not all through till maybe eight or nine months of age. And those teeth are called milk teeth. Do you know why they're called milk teeth? Because that's all babies should have, milk. <laughs> now they're tearing teeth. If a baby has anything, the baby just has little taste. Some of my babies were interested in a little taste. 